So today we're going to talk about why you lost your butt, yet you gained a belly. And there's some data I want to share in this book right here, the Siba Collection of Medical Illustrations, Volume 4, Endocrine System on page 85, okay? This is the picture of someone with too much cortisol. Cortisol, if excessive, can break down the quads and the glutamus maximus right here. So let me just explain. And I'm not trying to diagnose you with that condition, which is called Cushing syndrome, because you don't just one day wake up with Cushing syndrome, which is a high level of cortisol. It happens gradually. So you can have a version of that, but not a full-blown Cushing's disease just because of high cortisol. So since cortisol is a stress and a survival hormone, what it tends to do is keep your sugar levels available so you can use it as quick energy. And also it will rob Peter to pay Paul. It will take um, extra things from your body that you might not need or you have extra, like the gluteus maximus is the largest muscle in the body. So apparently it has extra amino acids to convert over into glucose. Then you have the next largest muscle, which is the thigh muscle, the quadricep. So both of these muscles are then broken down. And that process is a catabolic effect. Catabolic means you're breaking down something from protein to amino acid, and then from amino acid to glucose. In the process, you're developing also atrophy of the muscles, which could look like cellulite, but it's really not. It's just a loss of muscle fiber. So we get muscle, amino acids, sugar, or glucose, and then that's converted to fat with the help of insulin. So now the question is, what causes this condition? And then, of course, what can we do about it? Well, there's several things. It could be that you're on prednisone because you have some type of inflammatory condition. That's basically a synthetic version of cortisol. And one of the side effects is Cushing syndrome, which is that high cortisol. Now, when a woman goes through menopause, they will lose the ovary function or to some degree, not 100%, but there's a backup organ called the adrenals. So if you go into menopause with adrenal weakness or adrenal stress, then you can develop a higher level of uh, cortisol because the adrenals are now coping with that extra function. And that can affect a lot of things. It can affect the loss of collagen in your joints. Uh, even you can have bone loss because there's less uh, protein in the bone itself. But also this is probably why you see a lot of women after menopause that lose the butt and the quads. And then we just have a situation where you go through chronic stress for a period of time that can do it. Or let's say you have a tumor on either the adrenal gland or the pituitary gland that can also do it. Birth control pills. This is interesting. Birth control pills has many side effects. One being pseudo Cushing's. Now what is pseudo Cushing's? Well, it's not necessarily coming from the same mechanism. It's coming from a different mechanism where there is an increase of something called corticosteroid binding globulin. Now, what does that mean? That means that where there's an increase of this thing in your liver called CBG, okay, corticosteroid binding globulin. And what the heck is that? That is um, a combination of protein connected to cortisol. So in other words, about 90% of all the cortisol in the body is bound to a protein. And so that way it's not free, it's not available. And we have similar mechanisms for testosterone and estrogen as well. But we don't necessarily want all this free cortisol in the body. So we have to put it in an inactive or a bound state to protein. Well, the problem is birth control pills increases this CBG, thereby increasing cortisol. Okay. Now you also see this same mechanism in pregnancy, it probably could also happen if you are on some type of estrogen therapy as in hormone replacement therapy, possibly, or even possibly if you're estrogen dominant, okay, for some reason. The more fat that you have in your body, both men and women, the more estrogen you'll have because the fat cell makes more estrogen. But I didn't include that because there's not a lot of research on that topic. Now, there are other things that are not related to necessarily cortisol that can create atrophy of your butt and your thigh, okay? Like one would be sarcopenia. Now, what is sarcopenia? That is a condition where you're just losing muscle mass and strength with age, okay? 
And uh, I had done a video on that and I will put a link down below. So that's one cause, you're just getting older, uh, but there's things you can do to counter that. Inactivity. <laughs> so if you're sitting all day, you have a desk job uh, and you have no exercise, well, this is the body shape that you're gonna get. Or let's say you have chronic low back pain that prevents you from activating these muscles and that could do it as well. So what is the solution? Right here. If you are on prednisone, you want to find an alternative, okay? And I don't know what reason you'd be on prednisone for whatever reason, I would, there's a lot of different alternatives. In fact, I do have a video on that and I will put that down below. But typically there's always an herbal or some natural solution to whatever medication you're taking, of course, check with your doctor. Like adaptogens, for example, like ashwagandha um, is a great uh, stress reducer and it can greatly support your adrenals, the gland behind the cortisol. Also vitamin D is a natural anti-inflammatory, very potent and powerful one and it's great for pain. So if you're taking prednisone for that reason, maybe you should try something a little different. All right, number two, reduce your stress. So whatever the source of your stress is, do whatever you can to reduce the stress. Doing physical work is one of the best remedies for overall mental stress. So it takes your mind off things and it works your physical body. And of course, exercise itself is great for stress, especially long walks or any type of exercise as long as you avoid overtraining, which is not good for high cortisol. Number three, if you get on the ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting, you're going to reduce the flight or fight mechanism, the sympathetics, and increase the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, that can help lower cortisol. And this is why when people go on keto and IF, they don't feel as anxious anymore. They feel better, less depressed. So it can actually change your whole mood. Number four, the key nutrients that you need to help balance and reduce cortisol, potassium. Eat foods high in potassium or find a potassium supplement. Potassium is a natural physiological tranquilizer. It relaxes the muscles. It calms down your, your body. Also magnesium, very, very important. Just so happens that potassium, magnesium are in leafy greens, like in large amounts of salad. B1, which I like to get from nutritional yeast, also is one of the best natural things to lower cortisol. You'll feel the difference. You take it like in a form of nutritional yeast and you wait like four minutes and you just, wow, it just gives you relief. Um, all right, so now we have sleep. Of course, that is vitally important because the less sleep you have, the more cortisol you have, the worse the blood sugars. I have a ton of videos on that, which I'll put some important ones down below. And then number six, limit the amount of things that stimulate the adrenals, like caffeine, like tea, like chocolate, like um, energy drinks, all that will prevent you from sleeping. And there's one last point that is kind of invisible, EMF, electromagnetic fields, from your cell phone, from the computer. I bought a tester, okay, I did a video on this. I found that sitting behind a computer for I don't know how many hours, I mean, probably 14 hours a day, I was being bathed in electromagnetic fields, which when I completely rearranged my computer and things, I felt an instant drop in stress. So I think this has a, a really big factor. You should watch the video I did on this because it's an invisible stressor that is so common, yet it's not really mentioned hardly anywhere. So I'm gonna put that video up right here check it out.